Hi, this is Open Bharti and we are here at Open Source Summit in Vancouver and today we have with us Anne from OpenStack Foundation. Tell us what do you do at OpenStack Foundation? A, yeah. a, a foundation full of people with beard. <laughs> no, 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 we also we have lots of people who don't have beards. Um, yeah, so at the OpenStack Foundation, I do the release marketing for the OpenStack project, but in the last year, I've also become the community manager for the Kata Containers project, which is a newly governed project at the OpenStack Foundation. It's our first time we've departed from just having a project that's OpenStack. What was the need for, to create Kata Containers? Yeah, so Kata Containers came about from, you have Intel Clear Containers, and then the um, company Hyper had RunV. A lot of people are familiar with the RunV technology as well. And both of those were thinking about, in containers, how do we solve the problem of the shared kernel in particular, and how do we provide a second level of isolation in a container? You know, a lot of people, we have C groups, we have namespaces, setcomp, all these different things, but we want to really have a second layer of isolation in our containers, as well as getting away from that shared kernel problem. You see things like the dirty cow exploit is you know, your notorious example of what happens when you have a shared kernel. Um, so both Intel Clear Containers and Hyper Run V were thinking about this problem, and over the years, they kind of were converging on the same solution. So in December 2017, uh, they said, you know what, we're going to donate both of our code bases to the OpenStack Foundation. We're going to merge them together as become an open source community, and we're going to open source Kata containers to solve this problem in container security. We are on which release right now? The release? Uh, we are on 1.2, right. about to be on 1.3. Right. So uh, what kind of use case have you seen there? Yeah, I think the biggest one again is that um, security. So people who, I love containers, but for whatever reason, either I'm in a very large enterprise, a highly regulated environment, um, my security team says we really still want that last line of virtualization. Um, that, that's the biggest one that we see. I think we also see a lot of interest from public cloud uh, offerings that are saying, you know, I want to be able to bring in code um, at, from a user, and I don't trust it. I, for whatever reason, I don't trust what they're running, as you probably shouldn't, and I want to have a way to isolate that. So I might be thinking about multi-tenancy um, multi in Kubernetes, but I don't want to have to say this Kubernetes cluster is only for this user. I want to you know, take advantage of my resources, optimize those, but I need to isolate them. Another interesting one we have seen that I don't think we were necessarily expecting because we were really thinking about security, but a lot of people, they want to be able to containerize things that are rather legacy, and so they have you know, a custom kernel of some sort, or they have another reason that they've had a very hard time containerizing their application, but if we bring in a virtualization layer, they're able to get that portability back. And, and has there been any uh, production, you know, deployment in production that you're aware of, or is still in early phase? See, these are the questions that I, <laughs> um, we you, you don't like them? I love them, okay. but I'm, um, we have some, some mum, we do believe in production users. But I think it's, the project just launched in May, uh, so it's 1.0, it's pretty darn early days. A lot of people kicking the tires, uh, a lot of people asking, you know, all the right questions to think, to evaluate, is this going to work out for me? Um, and I think particularly Clear Containers, they're rolling onto Kata, I think just about two, three weeks ago. Um, so we should see the clear, people who are using Clear Containers are now going to become Kata Containers users as well. Right. And OpenStack Foundation and uh, OpenStack itself is kind of going through an evolution phase, you know, as the it's, it's, it's maturing and the, it's beyond the hype cycle. It has the users who know what they're doing. Uh, so where does, you know, Kata Container fit into the, the OpenStack, land, you know, bigger landscape? Yeah. It's really interesting. I think there's kind of two parts to that question, right? So there's how does Kata Containers work with OpenStack? And then there's what is Kata Containers doing with the OpenStack Foundation? <laughs> um, so part one, Kata Containers is agnostic to the cloud underneath it. So as long as you either have nested virtualization or bare metal, you can run Kata Containers. And we have folks at um, Google Cloud. We have people at Azure. We've got some AWS folks poking around. Um, so agnostic to that infrastructure layer underneath it, one of the great points. The second part of that question is, what's going on with the OpenStack Foundation? Uh, you know, we have eight, eight years at this point of experience running a really large open source, global open source project. And I think other open source projects are kind of raising their head, poking around, thinking about how am I going to be governed? I think a foundation home is right for me. And Kata Containers was the first one to approach us and say, we're looking for somewhere new. And we said, yeah, we will try something different. And mm -hmm. we're going to expand expand the scope of what the OpenStack Foundation governs. And we can bring that expertise from the last eight years. So now we have Kata Containers. We have Airship, which came out of AT&T. Uh, Starling X came out of Intel and Wind River. 
And then Zool, which has always been running Kata, or excuse me, has always been running OpenStax um, CI CD system, but was really starting to get some pickup from other users outside of OpenStax. Said, you know what? Let's spin that off as well. That needs to become its own project. How do you guys come up with all these cool names, you know? <laughs> I love the naming of uh, the OpenStack Foundation comes up with. They're really great. Um, part of it is it's a it's a free brainstorm, and then you have to go to the lawyers. Mm -hmm. And No, lawyers cannot come up with good <laughs> they names. They can come up with good names, but they can sure shoot down a lot of good things. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's, it's actually a really fun part of it. And I think there's so much to a name, too. Like, it makes you feel a certain way. It gives you confidence in a project. Uh, it, it either makes you come up with a bad pun, and that pun, you're just going to have that association. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's also really interesting in global communities, and when you intend to create a global community, there's so much around language and understanding and pronunciation. So if I, and this is kind of just my personal take on it, but if I have something with a really complicated spelling or a complicated, you know, it's sort of a play on words or a play on the language, and we're trying to create a global community, that becomes very hard for people to understand. I think uh, a couple months ago, we were having some conversations in Kata, and we were kept saying vert.io SCSI. And it's like, well, that's really an acronym of multiple things slapped together. And if English is your second, third, fourth, fifth language, what is vert.io SCSI, and how are you supposed to figure that out? It's, uh, it's kind of about using names and wording to create really welcoming communities. So I think there's a balance between like a really fun, dynamic name and something that people can understand. So what is the governance model of uh, Kata Containers? Yeah. Or, or all these projects, you know? So all the projects are kind of, I mean, that's the, the joy of getting to start something from scratch. Uh, they all get to find their own path of what's going to work best for them. Mm -hmm. I think the, the biggest leading principle we do have at the OpenStack Foundation is we have what we call the four opens. So it's um, open design, open development, open community, and open source. And as long as you are creating a project in, in a community that follows those, you're kind of free to say, hey, this is this innovative idea of how we think open source projects should be governed. We're going to give it a go. Uh, for the Kata Containers project, we have an architecture committee. And when we launched the project in December, we said, we're going to appoint these five people because they have some experience in the industry, that they have experience in the ecosystem, or a direct relation to the project. But pretty shortly after, we're going to need to have like proper elections. So we, this is actually exciting times. We are right in the middle of Kata Container's first architecture committee election. Um, and you get to kind of make all these choices that are going to affect the outcome of the project, of like, who gets to vote? Right. So we decided that someone who's made a code contribution that's been merged gets to vote. And it, these things are the decisions that lay the foundation for how the project is going to, you know, where it's going to go from here. And it's kind of the exciting part about building something from nothing. As we talked earlier, that OpenStack Foundation ha or Open Project has gone through you know different phases. Uh, learning from the previous mistakes, how are you going to ensure that you know these projects like Kata Containers and other projects won't repeat them? Yeah, I think we have in OpenStack. We're really blessed to have a community who's the first to say we made a mistake five years ago, and I wouldn't make that decision again. And I, I think it's um, you know in December at KubeCon they had. With the Kubernetes community, a lot of the kind of longtime OpenStack leaders sat down with them, you know, in all the hallway tracks and the breaks and the lunches, and the Kubernetes community got to say, you know, we're facing this choice coming up. What did you do? And a lot of the OpenStack leaders were like, you know what, the choice we made wasn't the best, or this is the choice we made, and here's how we arrived at that, or it was a good choice, and here's what we got. Um, all those lessons, I think the transparency and openness about them, that's kind of what makes this so fun and so exciting, is you get to learn from all those things. and. We have a really great community backing us and supporting Kata containers and saying, you know, this election, for example, saying this is what's worked really well for us, this is what hasn't, and we get to learn from that and figure out what we'll take going forward. Where I think things go wrong is when the use cases start exploding. So how do you ensure that Kata container, what is the focus, and how do you plan to keep that focus even if everybody's ex getting excited about using it? Yeah, we actually just this last week we're talking about what is our mission statement mm -hmm. and crafting that. And I think it's a balance between being realistic about we have we have to have focus. Mm -hmm. But we don't we also don't know what's coming. You know, like wh where is isolation going to go from here? And we want to make sure that we don't back ourselves into a corner where the thing we're focused on suddenly becomes irrelevant. So our focus is going to be about container isolation. And we decided that we are focused on ease of use. We are focused on increasing security. And um, that's what we're going to go from here. What those 
isolation solutions end up being. We can't define that, but we're here to find out. While it's relatively new and there are a lot of opportunities, there may be some challenges also that you already see. What are sure. those? Oh, that's a great question. I think the biggest challenges are creating a new community where people, they don't know each other. They come from very different backgrounds and even down to, you know, what's your preferred workflow? How do you like to work? Um, time zones, languages, just familiarity and the perspective they bring for, I want Kata containers in the back of my mind. I have this use case in the back of your mind. You have this use case. Um, someone might be more focused on performance, somebody's more focused on security, and somehow at the end of the day we all have to del keep delivering these releases and keep delivering a software project. That has been, the I think, the most challenging part for COD, and it's probably the most challenging part for any project, is we're kind of be this blending of different people and we have to deliver something that is stable and secure at the end of the day. So, so when you're not doing Kata container, when you're not doing OpenStack, what do you do in your free time? Ooh, this is a really fun question. Um, I race bicycles in my free time, and I race the kind where you're on a fixed gear bike, so there's no brakes, and okay. you're on a banked surface, so it's about 40 degrees, and you spin around in circles and you chase each other for decent amounts of money. So there is no, so OpenStack Foundation people don't do anything normal? Um, I don't think so. Uh, somebody does some salsa dancing, yeah. I race bikes. Yeah, so, is um, it, so did you guys like come from a different <laughs> planet? <laughs> Who are these people? Where did you find them? I yeah. mean, uh, they found me on the internet where you find all good <laughs> things. Um, yeah, maybe maybe that's part of being on staff is you've got to have a weird hobby. Right, right, right. And uh, anything else beyond uh, whatever bike you're <laughs> whatever training to? Um, I recently took up boxing. That's been really fun. Oh, good. Okay. Okay. Um, this is why I did keep the question soft, you know. <laughs> you like find out who is this weird person. Um, I mean, I, I I love to write. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of a writer at heart. Oh, what uh, kind of stuff do you write? Well, lately I just mostly write for work, and it's kind of been this personal challenge to get back to writing. Mm -hmm. uh, my my background's in policy, so a lot of legal writing. Um, but you know, even just like composing a tweet and being crafty with words brings right. me a lot of joy. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, any other hobby? I have hobbies. Um, oof. So all the way from biking to boxing to writing. <laughs> what a right? great mix. Uh, I'm trying to think of what else I what else I do in my free time. Um, I love. I mean, I just I love to read. I, mm -hmm. I anything I can get my hands on, I read as much as I can. Um, most of the time, I'm drinking coffee or riding my bike or thinking about how I could be doing one or the other combined with an interesting work problem. Like, they all feel each other. You get over so have you ever tried drinking coffee while you're riding a bike? Oh, of course. I, I keep some in my bottle, <laughs> and I drink it as I ride. Oh, yeah, all the time. All the time. Awesome. That's how you go fast. That's, that's a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs>